Good afternoon to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Monday, November 13th, 2017. Wanted to take a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies chart, which updated today. And I think a couple of things should jump out to be rather obvious. First, the large area of colder than normal temperatures along the equatorial Pacific region. The La Nina is here officially from the Climate Prediction Center a few days ago, declaring that we are now officially in a La Nina period, and this will hold on for the next several months, and then it will probably moderate, and presumably we would be in neutral conditions by sometime next summer. You usually don't go from La Nina to El Nino. That's kind of hard to do, but that's what we will track in the off-season, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. We begin the six months where there are no hurricanes to worry about, usually. Sometimes there are, but it's pretty rare. Look in the Atlantic. This is the other thing that should really jump out. Much above normal sea surface temperatures in the northwest Atlantic and a good deal of the main development region, as well as the northeast Atlantic, remains quite a bit above the long-term average. You don't see any large areas of negative anomalies anywhere in the North Atlantic Basin, north of the equator here, all of this area, at least on this particular shot, and we'll look at a wider global perspective in a moment, everything's just warmer than it should be in the Atlantic with that very large area. And as we broaden the shot in the Pacific here, uh, it's kind of like a global, well, this acts like a global radiator or a global air conditioner. The equatorial Pacific, when it warms, you get all kinds of weird things that happen. Spikes in the Earth's ground temperature. You know, and we saw that after the big El Nino of 2015. So now you've cooled all this water down, and it's, in some cases, quite a bit below average. And so we will probably see some colder temperatures overall coming up over the next year or so. There's always a lag. But these things, you think about how much real estate this is covering, a huge area of colder than normal temperatures. And, above all else, it's in the tropics down here. So that's a pretty significant event. And as I was alluding to, with the exception of this one area up here in the far north Atlantic, all of the Atlantic Basin is at least normal or slightly above normal, and in some cases, well above normal. I mean, look at this. There's just no area anywhere in the north Atlantic except this one region here with below average water temperatures. So we'll be watching that closely in the off season. If we go back to a zoomed in version, this will be the area to really watch for this cyclogenesis to take place with nor'easters. You'll get these Alberta clippers coming across, and they may develop this way. Some of them dive further to the south and then turn the corner. You just never know what the storm track will end up being, but all of that very warm water, if you get the jet stream and cold air involved, and it converges over this region here in the winter months, there could be some really big storms. We'll just have to wait and see about that. Not just for the Northeast United States, but also the Canadian Maritimes. So you folks in Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, be on the lookout because those warm waters go right up against your coastline as well. All right, so what's happening out there as we are about two weeks away from the end of this historic season? Well, we have another area of interest, this time non-tropical area of low pressure. And I'm going to show you that on a satellite picture in a moment. It has about a 50% shot at developing into a subtropical storm over the next five days. And this is what it looks like on the five-day graphic. And if we pick it out here, there you go. Way out here in the open Atlantic, heading in the general direction of the Azores over here. And it is, as I will show you on the satellite loop here, definitely non-tropical. There it is right there. A very large storm system rotating over the fairly warm water of the subtropical Atlantic, but that's not what makes it subtropical in nature. Notice how the thunderstorms and the bands are all well away from any center of circulation over here. So it's spread out. It has some characteristics of a mid-latitude storm, kind of a little bit of a frontal boundary maybe with it. Uh, the wind field is much more broad. The convective pattern is spread out away from the center, yet it is over fairly warm water, and there is some 
release of heat in the atmosphere because of these thunderstorms over the relatively warm water. So it's kind of a mix, a hybrid, if you will. Uh, but instead of calling it a hybrid storm, uh, the powers that be many, many years ago now, it's been a while, I think 2000, 2001 is when they implemented this, somewhere around there. And that's a while ago now, it is. Uh, this is called a subtropical storm. I mean, not yet, but that's what it could end up being. So everything's more spread out, the wind field is broader, the pressure gradient is more flat, things like that. But it's just an interesting feature. And also, if it becomes a named subtropical storm, the name would be Sean, but it would not count towards the ACE score for the season. Those don't get counted. Accumulated cyclone energy points, if I remember correctly, subtropical storms don't count towards that. In the Western Caribbean and parts of the Antilles here and even across parts of Florida, a large area of disturbed weather, some showers and thunderstorms blossoming from time to time, occasionally Jamaica, parts of Central America, the Caymans, all across Cuba, the Bahamas, and even some higher clouds over the south part of Florida. All of this associated with a broad area of just general lower pressure, nothing organized, upper level winds are too strong, and it's mid-November, and it's just kind of past the peak. It should have tried this a few weeks ago. In fact, we did see that, and that's how we got Nate, etc., etc. But, you know, just something to watch. I wouldn't be surprised, I'm going to say it again, if we get development down in this region before the end of the month and or into December, that is not going to shock me. The water temperatures, the upward motion all the rising air that we saw all across this region during the hurricane season, it doesn't just go away like the turning off of a switch. And so it won't be shocking to me at all if we get, you know, maybe this develops a little bit more, though I doubt it. I would put my money on something developing in this region over the next couple of weeks. Some of the models are indicating that in the longer range, back and forth, not consistently. But it is an area to certainly keep an eye on. And it makes sense this time of year. That's where you would look anyway. At the uh, end of the discussion here, we'll take a look at the GFS, the 850 millibar level, the full Atlantic. There's Africa right there. Here is eastern North America. And our subtropical system, 96L, really not doing much right there. As you can see, this is out to five days. It kind of goes away by the five-day time frame. There it is right there really loosely organized. You notice it's just not bundling the energy very well as we have compared that to other systems. And then we have this large ocean storm here. There's another one that forms here. And more systems trying to come out across the Great Lakes at the end of the five-day time frame as we get closer to the weekend and towards Thanksgiving week, a huge travel week, of course. And I will be talking about that in a week. Uh, as we get ready for sort of the off-season version of this, as we focus on winter weather and big-ticket storms that would affect travel and things like that. We always have something to talk about around here, even if it's not hurricanes. Notice, too, right at the end of the five-day period, there's a little blip of vorticity or energy right there in the uh, Central Caribbean, right there at the end. Wait for it. 96 hours, there it is, towards 120. So we'll see. There might be energy that tries to gather over the next several days down in that region. And if I stop this and just go to the last frame, you see it, there it is. Maybe that's the beginnings of something. Maybe it's nothing. We'll see. But boy, look at this energy coming out across the Great Lakes. Maybe some severe weather in some of this area. Oh, boy, you know, the transition from fall to winter Coming out of summer in a very active hurricane season, sometimes you can get some pretty big severe weather outbreaks, and it's always something to be aware of out there, that's for sure. All right, well, at least the tropics are generally quiet after one heck of a year. That being said, on November the, th November the 30th, <laughs> on November 30th, maybe you can say November the 30th, um, November 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to do a, a recap of the season. We're going to call the broadcast Day 183. We started on Day 1. Some of you tuned in for that. You may remember that. I'll go over some of the uh, um, more painful memories, and some of them are, unfortunately. It's just the way it goes. But we will take a look back 
see where some of the forecasts were right, some where they were wrong. Uh, we're probably going to pick on the European a little bit, the ECMWF, and it's horrible. Inso forecasts from last spring and winter, uh, you know, this past spring and winter, whatever, you know, this, the winter and spring of 17, those, that was just a disaster. And a lot of people were thinking there was an El Nino coming, and look at what we've got. It's a La Nina. So we're going to talk about that and other things, and then a quick sort of thinking ahead of what to look for, sort of keys to the game for 2018. Not a forecast, I don't do that, but sort of what we look for. What would I look for if it was just me and I didn't have you on the other side to listen to me? I would be looking at these same things with or without you, and so now that we do have this audience, we can talk about it together. So gather around the campfire on November 30th at 8 p.m. I'll talk about it more. It'll be on YouTube, commercial free. You can watch and enjoy, chime in, chat. We'll do sort of an ask me anything at the end of the broadcast and uh, try to wrap everything up and get ready for six months, hopefully, of no hurricanes. And then before you know it, it'll be the hurricane season 2018. It, as long as that just, you know, the farther away that is, the better. Trust me. Anyway, I'm done for now. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. As always, I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. We'll talk again next Monday.